Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a functional equation. We have f of x times f of y equals 4xy and we're going to be solving for f. Or we're going to find an expression for f of x. Now to be able to solve this problem we're going to use general techniques such as substitution. We're going to replace x and y with different numbers and see how we can get f of x. And when we do this, sometimes we'll replace y with 0 or 1, or we'll replace y with x or x with y. It doesn't matter that that's going to be a permanent thing, because you can just discard and use those variables again for another value. Okay? So, let's go ahead and start by using 0, because 0 most of the time is helpful. Let's replace x with 0. Then we basically get from here f of 0 times f of y, which is f of 0 equals 0. That's kind of nice because this kind of gives us an idea and this is something we can use later. So f of 0 is equal to 0, at least we know that. Now let's go ahead and do something else, maybe replace y with 0, right? Because 0 is almost always a good number to use. And when I say replace y with 0, obviously x is gonna just be x, okay? Stay as is. So it's going to be f of x times f of 0 equals 4 times x times 0, which is 0 again. Interesting, right? Well, this time f of 0 is already known to be 0. And if you replace f of 0 with 0, you just get f of 0 equals 0. So that doesn't seem to be very helpful, does it? Right? So, but think about it this way. f of 0 is a constant and we get f of cx equals 0 from here. And if we replace x with x over c, then we should be getting f of x is equal to 0. But the problem is, in this case, c is 0. That's why you can't do that. You see, you kind of need to know, hopefully you see what I see. And you can't always use that as an idea. Make sense? Anyway, so we kind of got f of 0 equals 0, but now we didn't get f of x. Let's go ahead and use a different value. How about using 1? 1 is also a good one. So let's replace x with 1. That's going to give us f of 1 times f of y, which is f of f of y, equals 4 times 1 times y, which is 4y. So again, along with f of 0, this kind of gives us an idea ab about what f could be. And if I assume that f is linear, then I can come up with a solution. So let's go ahead and digress a little bit. Suppose, and by the way, uh, we were not told that f is linear, but suppose f is linear, and this is what happens. Since f of s is assumed to be linear, f of x, uh, f of y we can basically write as a y plus c, and then if you replace f of y with a, a y plus c, then you're going to be getting something like f of a y plus c for f of f of y, and this will be by definition a times a y plus c plus c, and that will be a squared y plus ac plus c. And we want this to be 4y. So if you kind of arrange this, you're going to notice that, okay, a squared is supposed to be 4 because this is true for all y values, right, in the domain. And this means a is equal to plus minus 2. But at the same time, ac plus c is equal to 0. Make sense? Because there is no constant on the right-hand side. And if you take out a c, we get c times a plus 1 equals 0, but we know that a plus 1 does not equal 0. This is not 0, therefore c needs to be 0. Make sense? So this kind of gives you an idea about what f is going to be if it's linear. And since we assume that f of y can be written as a y plus c, it's going to be plus minus 2y plus 0. Or I can write it as two separate solutions, which is going to be a little cleaner. f of y is 2y or f of y is negative 2y. So there, there are two possibilities for f in this case. And if I wanted to use x as my independent variable, obviously I can write f of x as 2x or negative 2x. Make sense? Okay. So that would pretty much give us the solutions if f is linear. But of course, this is not going to give you necessarily all the solutions because we made an assumption based off of what we got from here. But let's go ahead and dig a little further, because what if f is not linear, right? It wasn't given. So let's go ahead and rewrite the problem. f of x, f of y 
equals 4xy. This time, I want to replace y with 1. I think we tried x with 1, right? So now, if y is equal to 1, we get f of x times f of 1 equals 4x times 1, which is 4x. And here, f of 1 is going to be, let's see if we can replace um, f of 1 with c. This is going to give us f of cx equals 4x, right? Cool. Now, we set f of 1 equal to c, and now we can go ahead and replace x with x over c, provided that c does not equal 0. If at the end c turns out to be 0, then our assumption was wrong, and we can always fix it, right? So let's replace x with x over c. That gives us f of c times x over c equals 4 times x over c. And then the c cancels out, and we end up with f of x equals 4x divided by c. This is cool. Now, how do I use this information? One thing that I know is f of 1 is equal to c, right? Along with this, I do know from here that f of 1 is c. So let's just replace, let's replace x with 1. f of 1 becomes 4 over c, which is c. And this gives us c squared equals 4, which means c is 2 or negative 2. But notice that f of x could be written as 4x divided by c. If you divide by 2, you get f of x equals 2x. If you divide by negative 2, you get f of x equals negative 2x as before. Now, using this method, obviously, we did not make any assumptions. We did not assume that f must be linear. When, and you can kind of check that f of 1 in this case is not going to be 0. So we are good to go. All right, so basically what we did here is was replacing x and y with different values until we got it. I didn't want to give you the solution right away because a lot of times it's experimenting. Almost nobody knows which method or path is going to provide the solution. Make sense? That's why you kind of have to test different things until you find a solution. But when someone is making a video on a problem like presenting you with the solution, they sometimes just give you the solution that works, but you don't know what is happening behind the scenes because they probably made a lot of effort to get there, but sometimes they don't show. I, that's what I want to show and share with you. And basically, this is what happens. And now let me quickly tell you how I came up with this problem. I kind of started with the solution, said, okay, I want f of x to be 2x. And now what would happen if I set up something like this? I evaluated it turns out to be 4xy, and then that became a problem. Of course, you ju just have to uh, cover this part, and you get a problem. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.